Steve and Linda. Right. Tell us about Linda yourself. Linda, start. Well, Steve and I have been married for 40 years, and um, we have three grown kids and two grandsons. Uh, both of us are from IT and management backgrounds. I, um, I did teaching. I, re I retired from, from that and did teaching um, here for a long time. And then uh, we joined Lifestyles in 2016, became PIG members shortly after that, and started investing as passives in multifamily um, until, um, I guess, Terry sat down with us and said, what are you waiting for? Why don't you become, why don't you um, become leads? So we started right in, and uh, we're very thankful and haven't looked back. We've been in five passive deals, and we're um, in our third deal as leads now. You know, when, uh, after the two-day, when I joined the Preferred Invest Group, Terry was the first person I had a meeting with. Yeah, me and my wife, Meredith. And I come, oh, I think I want to do she this. She goes, so what's your plan? And yeah. I said, mm, we'll probably be passes for about five years and then maybe become leads. Why wait? Because <laughs> <laughs> once you have the map that works, excellent. Awesome. Do you want to hold this? No, I'm good. OK. Mm -hmm. I'd rather you mess with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So why'd y'all join Lifestyles? So we, we joined Lifestyles. We always thought we got skills. I mean, both of us have masters and good technical degrees. We could do something. We, want, we should start our own business, but we could never figure out what it was. So you are the 20 percenters in the 80-20 rule? Uh, what does that mean? Does that yeah. mean you, you want to do it and you don't do, do it? The work, 80 uh, let's just watch say you do the work, we didn't right? know what to focus on. Okay, all right. All right. But we wanted our own business. But we got to 2016. We were ready for a change. Things were just starting to drag on, kind of like uh, Rick before, just wasn't enjoying it that much. Um, and we were starting to worry about retirement. We had enough so that we could make it to 80 or 85, but it wouldn't be full of travel and full of things that were much nicer than dog food. So, um, step forward a little bit into the light. And that would do it. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, we did, we did two things. One, she heard Della on the radio, but she also heard every so often she'd drop something on my desk. I work from home and she said, Hey, I heard this on the radio. Give it a call. Lifestyles Unlimited. <laughs> Real estate. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, here's the phone number. So I called it. That Wednesday, we went and heard Steve, can't remember his name, on yeah, Wednesday night. Yeah, Steve. Yep. And then, so that was Old just, radio guy. It was, a, it was a, it's the two-hour introduction kind of thing, right? And then you do, I'm a software guy, stepwise refinement. We took the next step. We came to case study. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, okay, I get it. Okay. So you're learning a little bit more. And then we said, got to do the two-day. So we, let's do the two-day, so another step. Are you saying the case study reinforced your belief cycle to get you to a two-day, which reinforced your belief cycle to, to make a real estate investment? I think so. Okay, all right. I think all right. that's what we're saying. Hey, there's a plan, y'all. <laughs> just saying. That was in my script. He just took it. No, I'm oh. kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so, so we showed up there, and there was the rest is kind of history. Now we had a roadmap. Now what are we going to do with it? So Excellent. You can flip that. Excellent. All right. So the property that we found, it's interesting how we found it. This is your second, third? Third. Third, third deal. deal. Okay. We closed last July. Okay. So we heard about it from a lifestyles realtor we heard about it one day before offers were due oh wow yeah that was fun so we heard about it at 10 in the morning about two in the afternoon we went for a tour of the property um the one we currently had at that time was a 1963 property this was a 1983 property we thought that's a that's a check that's in newer. favor and younger. We were, everybody likes younger properties Right. And we were actually we are actually <laughs> making offer on another '60s property at the same time. We thought, hmm. So anyway, we the next day we put in an offer. We made it to best and final. At best and final, we were the final two because best and final sometimes isn't final. You see, you go back sharpen your pencil. Uh, yeah, they try to make you fear a little bit, a little fud. I'll talk uh, this weekend. I'll, I'll go through offers negotiation, the process with brokers. Also, we'll cover it in all the gambit. Right. So anyway, the purchase price, we actually offered, well, forget it. That's too much detail. But anyway, we ended up buying it for 14 8 Excellent. 
And out of pocket, we ended up raising $6.8 million, which was an experience in itself because that was more than twice as much as we had ever raised before. And it was in an interesting time sure. where the market was starting to go fun. It, yeah. Yeah. So the market wasn't perfect? Not Luckily, you, you had $6.8 million in your savings account, and you were able to buy this property. No. Or not. <laughs> okay. All right. So how did you, uh, you get the money for the deal? Well, luckily, we're part of Lifestyles, uh -huh. and um, we have been meeting people for several years and building up a list of potential investors. Maybe at networking events networking that happened events, after the case study. Things like right? this, after the case study. The ginger and man. Ginger man, yep. Guilty um, as charged. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we let um, the people that we had, had communication with, we let them know that we had an opportunity, and they responded, and we were able to put together enough money to buy it. How many partners are in the deal? It's us plus 88. Okay. What is your smallest investor? 25. What's your largest investor? Us, but okay. besides that, 135. Okay. So uh, who wants to manage an LLC and a property with 88 partners, right? <laughs> who wants to give them 50, 100 grand to do it for you and just send you a check, right? <laughs> Guys, if you're not raising your hand, there's really no reason you should be here. You should go home. <laughs> I mean, the purpose of Lifestyles is to own and operate single family and multifamily properties. Copy? Okay. If you don't want to do that, then hey, man, it was nice meeting you. All right? That's it. If you don't want to be an owner, you don't have to be here. Copy. All right? So, copy All right. that. Thank you, Master Chief. Sorry about that. All right. No problem. <laughs> so we have a rehab budget of 1.5. Linda will talk about that in a minute, but I did want to talk about the financing. Mm -hmm. The financing, the only thing that was really available nice. was a bridge loan. Now, there's two kinds. He'll talk about them, variable and fixed. We want it fixed. Why? Because if you get variable, the lender's going to make you buy insurance for your interest rate. And that could get expensive. In fact, there was a guy who bought a property um, in November, the year before we bought, so in tw November 2021, he had to pay $100,000 for his insurance on the interest rate. So you, you get an interest rate of 2 or 3%. This is a little outside the scope of a case study yeah. yep. I could talk about in the two-day. It's even outside Sorry. the scope of a two-day. But... Um, he got a 3% interest rate, maybe, or two and a half. And the insurance says, well, rates, or the lender may say, well, rates are going up. You need to buy a cap ahead of time, maybe a 2% spread or something. That's 100 grand. Yep. So anyway, last May, this past May. The price of the cap if went he, up. No, I take that back. The, the May before we bought it, it went to $700,000. And if, you're, if the economy is crazy at the end of three years and you need to extend, you don't know what it's going to be. Yep. I did not want to lose a property. We got a fixed rate bridge. Copy. And non-recourse. And if of interest course. rates get smart again? You can refi. We'll yeah. be the first ones in line when it gets down to five. Right behind me. <laughs> right behind me. All right, next, next <clears throat> slide. Thank you. Okay, so, so current income, this is annualized based on end of so February. One second. A, a good thing about that is, uh, it do, as I said before, it doesn't matter where interest rates are, right? We buy properties that are going to cash flow that we know we could buy at, uh, and, and increase the value of the property. Um, and uh, interest rates go up and down, but as do rents. Copy? Yep. And expenses. Yep. So and every expenses, month is yeah. a little bit different. So when you say annualized, you're just taking, looking at it across the whole year, averaging it out. So, so these are their... Annualized expenses. Yep. So current expenses annualized up to about eight hundred thousand monthly cash flow. We actually forecast a negative cash flow in year one, where it's a value play. There's, there were only. I got it. It was a nice property, it. but it so, was dated. Go. I'll teach you this weekend the types of deals for multifamily investments. One's a yield play. We're going to buy it for the yield for the cash flow. On the other end of the spectrum is the value play. We're going to buy it because we're going to significantly increase the value. Fixer upper. The, the, the five ways we make money in real estate to significantly increase the value of that multifamily investment. And then there's deals all in between that are called hybrids. Uh, those some value, some cash flow, good cash flow, maybe a little bit of a value increase after a few years. Um, but I'll teach you all about all those this weekend. 
Fantastic. Yep. So anyway, we, we planned that, but it was a value deal we, because you're going to have vacancies while you're upgrading things. It's not unusual in the first year to be a little bit negative. And so far, we're right on track with what the numbers were that we were looking at. Um, what's one other point I was going to make? Anyway. Um, the valuation. Oh, but it was a value now. play. So we're looking at the capital gains really in two to three years. That's really what we're looking at. Um, the cash flow is always going to be small, but it's going to be positive. Okay. The valuation is about the same as what we bought. We yeah. only okay. had for seven 14. months. Okay, 14.8. Okay, copy. Yeah. And right now, it's hard to say exactly what it's worth because it's worth what somebody will pay for it. Mm -hmm. And in this environment, you're just not sure. Copy. That's it for this slide. Next. Next Thank slide. You. Okay. So the picture on the left is what it looked like when we bought it. Um, loves, she loves it those bushes. It wasn't a bad property. It wasn't, Why'd you get rid of the bushes? It wasn't terrible. <laughs> The bushes, um, you, you remember the ice storm, the snowmageddon, the bushes didn't do real well through that. We lost, the, they lost a lot of the bushes. They were way overgrown, they were way past their time. We asked a lot of people, hey, if you could do anything with this property, what would you do? The first thing they said was, get rid of the bushes. And so, um, but they did provide a little bit of a barrier. That's a pretty busy road mm -hmm. there. And um, so we wanted to put something there. And the, if you plant trees, it takes them a long time to grow. So, and one thing I forgot to tell trees. you is this is right on US 80 in Mesquite, halfway between I 20 and I 30. Okay. And, so, it's, and it's also right next to the intersection of um, I 30 and also 635. A, so a big road. It's, convenient so, for transportation. Yeah, and one of one of the things we wanted to do was to, to change it, to upgrade the look, upgrade the curb appeal, make it look more contemporary and let people see it. Mm -hmm. So Give that's why pop. we painted the dramatic colors and um, um, we added the, the cedar panels there in the front, sort of for a, a little bit of a sound barrier, but visual barrier as well. Um, for the, now for we the had residents. to plant these in February yeah, but see right here, <laughs> There's in between these gaps are actually very beautiful crepe myrtles that are waiting for spring. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to be blooming any minute now, I know. <laughs> Excellent. So, anyway. Thank you. Go ahead, Wayne. Okay, so even, even the interiors um, okay. weren't, I mean, some of them are rougher than others, that's always true, um, but the, they were tired and dated, and um, I don't know if you can see, we, we basically, when we, when we classified this as a value play, we, we planned to do really nice, high quality upgrades on it so that we could get a higher rent bump. And so far that that's playing out very well. Um, we, there was a big, like, I don't know what you call it, Yes. You know the 1980s yeah. where they dropped down this, the ceiling for no is, reason this, above this the bar? This was extended. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and there's oh, nothing. Really? Yeah. yeah, and that and the double the double layer bar, you can see right here, yeah. mm -hmm. the double layer bar. So oh. we, we took hey, that out. Hey, y'all, I did the same thing on one of my properties recently. Still it's doing it. It's yeah. amazing the difference it makes. It just really opens up the room and looks beautiful. Um, and so it changes the whole look of it. Um, and we put in some nice backsplash and um, nice nice tiles and granite countertops. So one bedroom, two bedroom, does it matter? We have, uh, no, it doesn't matter. What was matter. previous rents versus what you are getting today for the same unit? For the Ish. same, yeah. Um, and that varies a little bit too because some of them are in better condition than others, you know. But we were getting, or they were getting 900 to 1,000 and we're getting now 13, 1,400. So three to five hundred dollars increase in rent. Yeah. Yeah. Copy. Um, and there's uh, two bedroom unit, two bedroom, two bath, and one bedroom, one bath units. Okay, excellent. So these are some oh, pictures nice. before. Yeah. This, so the bathroom before isn't horrible. It's, they were the drop-ins. They're the plastic, you know. Um, so when we wanted to replace that, we had to replace the tub wow, as well. Wow, replace tubs. We had to replace. Yeah. That's that's a big deal. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and the toilets for um, energy conservation. And we had the granite. It wasn't that much more to just extend it into the bathroom from the kitchen, so. Excellent. OK. OK, we got some numbers. So let me just, I'm not going to go through and talk about every, every number. But I do want to say this. Why did we like the property from a value play perspective? They, their market, 
their market rent was a dollar fifty three a foot, but they were only getting actuals at a dollar twenty seven. That's twenty cents, over twenty cents a, um, a square foot square just foot. to get to market, mm -hmm. and they were getting between one hundred and fifty and two hundred more for a premium upgrade. They had only upgrade out of 98 units, they upgraded two, one, be one bedroom and one two bedroom. But they'd proven they could get it. They had to prove the market so you'd pay more for it. Yep, they did it. Yep. But, but <laughs> if they hadn't done it, I'm not sure I would have had the confidence yeah, no. that we can get what they had. And the bank wouldn't have either, right? Yep, yep, yep. So, absolutely true, absolutely true. So, we ended up getting after it and the bottom line here is we told you about cash flow not being very pretty in the first year it gets a little better we're better, yeah. better. We, significantly but better. we to, we told we told our potential investors it's going to be a slight loss in the first year it's going to be modest gain, cash on cash in years two and three but let's look at the capital gains on the next slide so, real quick so this weekend uh, I'll teach you what these numbers mean also. We're going to go through income, not just income. We're going to go through gross potential rent, loss to lease, vacancy, bad debt, non-revenue units. I'll teach you about those five things in that one word right there. Copy. And I'll teach you about the 28 ways we increase income in multifamily. Yeah. I'll teach you about the operating expenses and teach you about the valuation of single family and multifamily properties. Yeah. So. so there were 96, there's 96, 98 units. And then we had 96, two of them had been up because two of them had been done. Copy. So we're planning to do half, half of them to a premium and the other half just touch them with $3,000 dress up to get to market or to justify getting to market. But the truth is we're getting to market without even doing some of those. So um, but that we're, also we're seeing the returns. That strategy though, and I'm thinking one of the reasons they're doing this is uh, it may take two, three weeks to upgrade a unit where you can paint it and uh, resurface the countertops and release it in a week, right? So that affects your vacancy rate, your turnover rate and your, and really affects your income right so, yeah. so we want to try to keep the occupancy up yes. while we're doing renovations so if we get too many vacant and we'll adjust and do a couple of classic ones quick turns and then we'll try to keep it going yep copy yep so in the first year you see that we didn't even try to necessarily value it partly because of the negative cash flow but the other part is if you if you actually sell it in year one you lose a tax advantage. It's normal income and not capital gains. So we just forget that. So at the end of the second year, now all of a sudden we're at about 50% increase in value. So in year had. two, you're estimating a 50% equity return. Yep. And to and cash. Yeah. Now you got closing costs and stuff to deal with. But yes. But that's an unrealized capital gain though, because they're not going to sell in year two right. unless a great offer comes Absolutely. around. Absolutely. Right? Yep. And then in year three, see. We're getting these big rent bumps, right? But it phases in. You got to wait for a lease to terminate. Then you got to upgrade the thing, and then you've got to release it, and yeah. that staggers in for a year. So now we get where we're fully upgraded, and we get to year three, and now all of a sudden, when you start looking at keeping your expenses under control, hitting a nice NOI somewhere along here, um, we're about 90% year and, three. And that's the beauty of, uh, so single family, it's like a race car, right? Uh, they rehab those single families in three, four weeks, and they're done. And they're getting $300 bumps in rent. 100 units is like a ship, right? You turn the rudder, it's going to take you, you know, a while. Because you got to rehab. And you can't just kick people out. You have to honor the leases they've signed for 12 months. Uh, but you just rehab as they turn. Excellent, but let's go back. We, we missed the big number. Okay, oh. so they raised 6.8 million uh, with 90 partners or so. Yeah. Um, now, do we have any other partners in the room? Please raise your hand. Excellent. Wow. Now keep your awesome. hands up. Keep your hands up. All right. Obviously, y'all said, "Hey, Steve, Linda, we'd love you. Go do it for us." Maybe y'all have invested with them before. So how many of you would like to be in a deal like this? Raise your hand. All right. Awesome. All right, hopefully by the end of the year. Okay. <laughs> so, we never advertise deals from the stage. Not going yet. Next slide. All right, so 
Um, what are we doing to increase the NOI? Well, how are we raising the value of this property? Our first um, step was to increase the curb appeal, let it get noticed, mm -hmm. take care of uh, a lot of deferred maintenance. There was stucco on the outside of the building that needed to be repaired um, that was allowing water in and things like that. So we repaired everything, painted everything, took care of landscaping. Um, we created an office out of a two bedroom apartment. We just kind of put a little wall up and where the bedroom had a window, we turned it into a door. So we took a two, two bedroom, two bath apartment and turned it into an office with a bath and a one bedroom, one bath apartment. So we got an extra unit to lease out. The um, office did, did consume a one and one. Oh. And so now guess what yeah. we get to put on the market? Another unit. Another unit, yeah. Um, we, uh, we'll come back to the interiors. On the outside, we added some amenities. We added a dog park and a barbecue area. We added some covered parking. And um, we just try to make sure we fix everything we can. Um, and on the interior, Steve told you about our, our um, process for that. We, we try to, we want to make them nice so we can attract the higher rents. But we want to do it conservatively. So we're going best product, best price, which I'm sure you'll talk about more yes. this weekend. And, kind of our, um, our map at Lifestyles. Yeah. Best product at the best price, market rates, with the best people. Right. All right. Um, yeah. Next slide. Yeah, Next please. slide. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ah, here we is, go. Is Gino still in the house? No. no. Okay. Cool. He's at Doesn't the matter. ginger man. Doesn't matter. He's at the ginger man waiting for us. Yeah. It's kind of the secret of networking too. You get there first. Anyway, he he was. <laughs> If, those, if you weren't here earlier, Gina was um, saying how he was a teacher. He used to have set an alarm clock at 5 o'clock every morning. I did that yep. for many, many years, and that's my favorite thing now is I don't have to set an alarm anymore. See, so I don't have that problem, man. I wake up at 6.30. That's a, that's a military I training. I is charged. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. I don't... And... So short-term uh, short -term goals. goals, we, um, we okay. have become grandparents. We've got nice. a, uh, two little, wonderful little grandsons, and um, we like to travel. Short-term, we want another property pretty soon. Um, we want to retire Steve from his W-2 job, um, and we like to do a whole family vacation. That's kind of short-term goals. The other thing is, it, what she mentioned we've been married 40 years. One thing's lifestyles let us do was for as part of our 40th this is um on the mediterranean coast of italy so nice. last year in september travel so. oh, huh All we're right. starting already yeah. okay nice. next slide please oh well, i think yeah no more long-term goals i think oh, sorry uh we want more we want to do more properties we want more travel we want to be able to be generous people live generous lives with our time and our money and um, our goal has always been, since we started this, we want to be able to improve the lives of our residents, our employees, our investors, and our family. So, I truly believe, and this is weird how I've developed this over 10 years, that everybody deserves a quiet, clean, affordable place to live. Yep. Copy? Absolutely. Uh, Lifestyles has the map of delivering a quality quiet, affordable, upscale place to live, right? And as long as you provide that service, they don't move, right? People aren't going to move. I mean, it's the third most stressful thing to do in life after uh, death in the family, uh, marriage, divorce, and then moving, right? So uh, Lifestyles teaches y'all to do that. And there's no more lucrative investment than single family and multifamily in Texas. I truly believe that. I don't own any stock. Yeah. So, excellent. That's pretty much it. Um, Vendors. Okay, so I'm fond of telling newbies on the road trips, this is a team sport. Yes. Relationship matters. And it also matters with our team. We have th three local mentors, as they talked about, I talk to all three of them, but for different reasons. Mike and I communicate the most simply. Um, when I need something that's a little bit an innovative look at a situation, I talk to Don. And when I need a kick in the pants, I talk to Alex. And so, so yeah. but, but
but also the operations staff is incredibly useful. They've been so useful to us. We self-manage, so on all three of our properties, we've run into this. What do I do? And they go, oh, well, you do one and two and three, and if you have time, do four. And six weeks later, everything that was a yeah. headache is gone. It's just so good. The operations consultants are worth their weight in gold. Can I talk to you? Go. Yes, you just can. Quick. Um, so our first property, we had um, 17 units, or a first-time um, managing a property and we were having trouble with delinquency. And I, we had a bunch of residents that were like struggling maybe or just paying part of the rent and not all the rent. And I, I, find, I went and talked to Teresa. She was one of the operations consultants. She goes, she just looked at the rent roll. Yeah, she just looked at the rent roll and she goes, well, here's your problem. Don't accept partial payments. And I'm thinking, well, isn't some money better than no money? She's like, nope. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I trusted her experience. I did what she said, and by golly, it just it's <laughs> cleared up ah. just like that. Yeah. Hey, so Presta. so it's wonderful to have people that have the experience to, and and that are helpful to you along the and, way. In Don's office, he has a plaque that says, "Oh no, not another learning experience." <laughs> 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 but but as a group, mm -hmm. we learn from each other. Uh, not just the mentors. I've called yes. on other leads, and they've given me such a fantastic advice or where to go or, oh, I've had that. Here's what you need to do. It's fantastic. The group is just incredibly open and helpful. So, so Lifestyles Unlimited is a, is a group of successful real estate investors who learn from each other and share best practices. Copy? All right. So we mentioned that um, Lifestyles Realty and Carolyn brought us the deal a day before it was offers were due. But uh, you were prepared to move. That was enough time. You had your ducks in a row. <laughs> they Absolutely. knew we were looking. Mm -hmm. We had been underwriting lots of deals. We were ready to move. You're already pre-qualified yeah. yep. probably. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So other key members of our group, um, Old Capital, Paul Peebles and Ricardo. We've worked closely with Ricardo on all three of our deals. Dodson Legal. Uh, Rick was around here earlier. He's still Rich in the back. Richard's there, yep. Uh, and, for the contract part of this latest property, Gus was handling us day to day. And then Ramey King, we primarily work with Aaron Calso, but Jeff King is right in the middle of all that. And naturally, our KP and all of our fantastic investors, they've just been great. And without them, we got nothing. It's a team sport, and we really, we're really uh, thankful for all that. Excellent. Well, we got questions still. <laughs> So thank you for your time, but we do want to take a few questions from the room and or online. Yeah, we got time. <laughs> She's a visitor. Yes, ma'am. Here's a mic. We're so proud of them. Uh, we're so proud of them for what they've done and they've listened. They have the best looking curb appeal of any property in their area and they've got brand new A quality property across the highway from them and you do not even see those properties because theirs stands out. Awesome. They did a fantastic Thank you for that. job. So, I heard this on a road trip also at Lifestyles, right? One thing we do with our properties is uh, if we, we differentiate them, right, from the competition. Yeah, make them pop, like, like you've seen the single family uh, case studies do also. Yeah. Red door, make it pop. I saw one of the 28 ways that you're increasing your operating Covered income parking. Was the covered parking. That's yep. exactly right. Do you think that was worth, uh, yes. worth the money to do? Yes. Yes, sir. We looked at um, all the apartments have um, washer dryer hookups. So part of our originally we were thinking, well, maybe we'll invest in some washer dryers and we'll rent those and get a little bit of extra income that way. But when we did the numbers on that, it it didn't work out. The um, residents could rent washer and dryers for cheaper than we could provide them from other places, and it just didn't look like it was going to pay off much. So we decided to put that money that we were thinking for washers and dryers into the covered parking. And um, I, I asked uh, our property manager, I said, look, if we had some covered parking here, how much do you think you could get for, um, per, for month. per month for one of these covered spots? She goes, $75 a month. And I was like, Wow. Okay. okay. So, I think we could do that. Um, online, North Texas, North Texas hail. Yep. <laughs> online and in person. Who's coming to the two day this weekend? Right. Quinn, what's up, man? Okay. 
Covered parking changed my life, and I'll tell you that story. <laughs> I mean, when you increase income in multifamily, it significantly inc increases the value of the property, and I'll go through that with you this weekend. So yes, we have 28 ways, actually about 30 ways we increase income in multifamily, and I'll go through all of them this weekend. Can I say something about today? Yes, you can. Okay. So. You can answer questions or talk, man. Okay. okay. Questions. <laughs> no, go ahead. Do your thing. Okay. So. Went to the two day, right? And now I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, I know. What was so your, I've been uh, through uh, it. Moment. I've been yeah. through it. Finally, I got to the middle of day two, which was multifamily. And Dave Fisher, he said, if you buy a deal, one of three things is going to happen. You're going to make money. You're going to break even. You're going to lose money. And I was asking him at lunch, what am I getting for my membership? And I answered my own question. I said, I think it's, if I follow the roadmap, I greatly minimize any chance I have of the bottom tier. And so that was that much. Mm -hmm. But the other part of the two day is this. I was 59 when I took the two day. Mm. I've tell all my friends, I don't care how old they are, go to the two day. It's the best two day seminar for the money it's worth it. Don't wait till you're as old as I am to learn the principles. If you don't decide to follow it, fine, but you need to know what it's about. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a seven or eight day course in, in the two days. Yeah. Yes, perfect. Uh, yes, Ember, thank you very much. All right, questions from online. Uh, since you guys self-manage, how many hours per week, approximately, oh, does it yeah. take you? How much do you work? For me, I'm, I'm doing back office stuff. And for me, it's probably uh, up to four a week, except for when I have month-end stuff to do. And then it will probably be an, an extra day. The last day of the month is always like a 12-hour day, right? right? When we were with our first one, we didn't have any employees, right? I was... I was the boots on the ground there and doing all the work. So that was that was a lot. Um, we, I tried to be present on the property. I was managing everything. So that was a lot. With the property number two and three, we we're able to hire employees. So we have a property manager and a full-time maintenance person on site. So that greatly takes the stress off. I, I'm more working on managing the employees and um, helping with the big decisions, managing the contractors for the um, for the capital improvements. So I'm, I'm on property probably one day a week and um, for, well, at least a visit to the property. On phone. Yeah, yeah, and on the phone and on for yeah. on call for um, par probably half time. Yep, good. Yes, ma'am. All right, next question also from online. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the syndication process as it was on your first deal? Sure. On so first deal. Um, like as how a, it happened for me, but it'll yeah. be the same for them. Yeah. Uh, first came time to the experience. two days. Yep. Joined the preferred invest group, sat down with Terry, got some education, right? Uh, some classes I had to see, attended a road trip, like the road trip we're having here Friday, where we're going to go visit their property. At that road trip, there's a separate networking session between lead investors and passive investors. So you meet leads. And also we have online ways to meet leads too and uh, online portals. But that's one of the ways. Yeah. And then uh, I seen four or five leads at my first road trip, took notes on all of them. A few of them were thinking about doing a deal and had a follow-up meeting with them and got into their deal. How'd it happen for y'all? I got my lead certification in October 2015, and my first road trip was November up at one of Don's properties that Kevin now owns. Didn't. Yep. And so out on the tennis court, first time I handed out cards, I ha on that tour, I actually happened to meet a guy who became my KP. Okay. That was cool. So, so we'll talk about KPs or key principles in the two-day also. Yep. High net worth individuals. And then on in December, I went to the next one, picked up you know, handed out more cards. We have monthly road trips. And then early, early January, there's one more. So, and they're also online, too. You can dial into them. And so. National um, road trips. 
somehow things accelerated. I was, had only just become a lead. I talked to um, Cap, uh, Capital One. Capital One, sheesh, old capital. And, and they, the said, the they said, they looked at me and they said, okay. They looked at my KP and said, great, anything you want. No, that's not quite true, but close. And so that was all, that was ticking the box. I came to talk to the you realtors. You got qualified here. for the loan. Absolutely. Yeah. I came here to talk to the, um, to um, two of the realty members, and they looked, we told them what we were looking for. They looked at each other and they goes, that one. And so all of a sudden we had a property to look at. And so we tagged it and we went and looked at it. January 9th, two and a half months after I became a lead, we have a deal. Hmm. And the worst part about that was I, it's too dumb to know. You have to network with people to convince them to give you money, and sometimes that takes a couple of months, right? The, the next thing you know, um, <laughs> we were doing a capital raise. It was a modest amount, but with 40 people on our list. Ooh. That's a small number. Yeah. Small total. Well, how much was, what would y'all raise? Uh, 650. Well, 650. Yeah. Well, you just don't when know you those haven't things. done it before. It, it could have been real bad. <laughs> so my first deal was then, 550 out of pocket, and the seven people in the deal were the friends Prince. that I referred to lifestyles, right? I said, y'all come do this. Y'all give me a hundred grand. <laughs> but, but we still followed the plan. We followed the roadmap, yeah. and off we went. And then Freddie wouldn't give us, I was talking about relationship earlier. Freddie would not give us the loan and let us self-manage immediately. Because we didn't have experience. Correct. So we had an organization that they said, you know, we'll work a transitional thing with you. We'll start over in three to six months. Linda will take over from them. And they were awesome. And she'd sit with them a couple days a week and just learn about the process and things that get done. We have not used them for property management on our next two properties. Because but we have used them for design and construction and advice. And the relationships matter. You don't know where it's going to come from when you need help. Yep. Copy. Excellent. Um, any last questions in the room? I mean, we're pretty much wrapping up here. No? Yes. Yeah. How, do, how do I sign up for the two-day? Oh, great question. <laughs> Ember, raise your hand. <laughs> All you need to do is go and talk to Ember. She'll sign you up or uh, her associate sitting next to her. Yep. Sorry, but what's your actual question? Sorry. Help me out. Three years, I noticed on your slide it said... So they can hear you. They you're going to refi, They right? can start over. They can hear you online. All right, all right, here we go. Three years on your slide, you're going to go for a refi, and, and you're going to return, I believe it said, 98% of your original investment. Ish. Ish, right? What, are, what was in your MFQA for the three-year refi, and what Ooh. are you going to end up with in year five? You're, you're stating okay. it a little bit more directly than we stated it. So Bill's asking a question about the MFQA, which is the pro forma they showed people before people gave them money. Copy? Yep. So he's like, what was your three or five year plan, but now you're saying it looks like a three year deal? Um, I just didn't show the other years that we modeled. But we did say as part of our business plan is this. Year three is an inflection point for us. One reason is it's the end of the three plus one plus one. But the other part is, depending on market. The loan. Depending on the market, three choices, really. One, you refi, cash out refi. Two, um, you sell it. Or three, you hold on to it till the market conditions are better. And so part of that fixed bridge was I know exactly how much it cost me if I need a fourth year to wait for the market to, to sort itself out. So, so what was it your, was always... What was we, your three-year equity capture number, though? It, about 90. Okay. At, at the current rates. Close to pro forma. Yeah. A little conservative compared to how things seem to be shaken out. So the rest is all great. Right. Sure. Excellent. Good question. But what we, what we did do in, in the numbers that we showed you... Um, like I said, it's worth what somebody will buy, pay for it. We put in the numbers that we modeled in the MFQA. We haven't tried to adjust it and guess what it really looks like now. Because y'all just bought it. Seven months ago. Excellent. Any other questions? Well, Steve, Linda, Mike, thank you very much for... Uh, you were awesome.